Welcome to Mini Quiz Monday with Game Little Tutors. Each week, we bring you quick, fun challenges to help you get one step closer to dominating this fan. Don't forget to check out more study resources at GamunnelTutors.com, comma, and be sure to tune in to the ISFAB Domination Podcast for more tips and strategies to crush your ISFAB exam. Welcome to Mini Quiz Monday, guys. I'm dropping mini quizzes every Monday. And in this session with one of my students, you can see the videos of how to get the right answers. Happy studying out there, and remember to be kind to yourself and treat yourself as a learner. All right, take care, guys. What's up, everybody? Mickey Gaminall here getting into Mini Quiz Monday. I have Soraya Butler helping me out, and I'm coming live from Waikiki Beach with my family. So you might hear my family too. So I'll be ready for that. But yeah, we're going to go over a couple questions, and then uh, yeah, I hope everybody's having a great day out there. So, Soraya, real quick before we get started, just tell me what branch you're trying to get into and when your test is. I'm trying to get into the Army and my test is on Wednesday. Awesome. Cool. And so we're going to get some study time in today. And then, uh, yeah, you'll have another day to study. And then best of luck on Wednesday. I think you'll do great. Sweet. Can you read this question for me? Give it your best guess. I know last time we talked about the timelines on these. So these questions, word knowledge should be about 40 seconds. So go ahead, read it out loud, and then tell me the answer. Ready, set, go. I can't see the question. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, that would help, huh? <laughs> All right, one second. I didn't, my bad. Give me a second. Clock's, clock's ticking, Soraya. <laughs> All right. How about now? Yes, now I can see. Perfect. All right, ready, set, go. I think the answer would be C. C, what's the word? Fr frugal. Okay, and then what's the right answer word? Okay. Found this Thrifty. Answer. What's the word? Thrifty. Check it out. Exactly right. Cool. So the the way you pronounce it is frugal. But even though if you pronounce it wrong, it's not a big deal. But I would encourage you to kind of read it out loud to yourself quietly. And don't worry too much about the pronunciation. You're 100% right. Frugal is thrifty. This is another example of, well, do you want to tell me how you arrived at the, the answer? To be honest, I just made my best guess. Perfect. Well, and your best guess was right. And so the test doesn't know whether it's your best guess or if you're just right. But yeah, you did great. One thing to think of, of and we covered this last time, is going to be the opposites. So do you see any opposites here? Generous and wasteful. Yeah, those are opposites. And so last time I said opposites, one of them is usually the right answer. Uh, but in this case, neither of these were the correct answer. So we'll go over it a little bit. Frugal means to be cheap with your money, right? Not spend much. And so does thrifty. Thrifty is not spending much money either. Generous is uh well, what, do, you, do you know the words generous wasteful and lavish generous is like willing kind of mm -hmm. wasteful is like trash basically mm -hmm. like and i don't know what lavish means cool not bad yeah so generous is willing i, I think other people would say giving a lot of times generous is like a generous donation. People are giving stuff and then wasteful is trash. Yeah. It's the, the good thing about wasteful is that it has a suffix. So, you know, the word waste. And so you can just use that full to kind of, it doesn't, it just changes the meaning of the word a little bit, but the root word is still waste. And so you can run with that a little bit. Great job. All right. Let's check out. We'll save Eiffel tower for the end. And go ahead. Can you read this one for me, please? What is 15% of 200? All right. This is the kind of stuff that you were worried about. Let's get started. Go. Would it be B? B is a good guess. But it's actually not B. Your timing is pretty good. So let's talk about this one a little bit. I love first sent questions. And I think you should too. Because you. there's no reason you can't do it. Anytime you see a percent, I want you to think cents, okay? So like dollars and cents. So what would 15 cents look like? Uh, a nickel paper. and dime. A nickel and dime, yeah, that's true. But written on paper, it's going to be 0. 0.15. That's oh, kind of on paper? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like that. 
right? And so you convert the percentage to a decimal. Anytime you see a percent, you can change it to cents and you already have it in decimal form. Okay. okay. And in this case, anytime you need to take a percentage of a number, you just multiply by that decimal. All right, I'm going to pause here because that is an important part. Do you have any questions about that? So you would put it in a decimal and then you multiply it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you see 72% of 96, you're going to do 96 times 0.72, just like that. Okay. All right. And this is this is going to be a long way to do this answer. I'm going to show you the fast way at the end. But this is basically, if you know how to do it this way, you won't be stopped on any percent question. Because I know you got the, your math facts are good enough that you can do this from here. So have you multiplied numbers like this before? Yeah. Okay. Tell me what you got, get for an answer. I'll give you a second. Let me get a piece of paper. Ah, yeah, I'm definitely always, always have paper. I got 30. 30 is the correct answer. Great job. All right. I'm just going to do this for the sake of argument. Five times zero is zero. Five times zero is zero. Five times two is 10. And then you shift over because now you're in a different place. And so we shift over. And then one times all this is just going to be zero, zero, two. And you can add that together and get three, zero, zero. We know that it's going to be two decimal places that you have to shift because there's two decimal places in the question. The 200 has one right here, and that's not moving the decimal place, but the 15 has one right there, and that is a shift. So you got to shift the decimal down here two times. Is that how you did yours? Yes. All right. And if it's not exactly the same, that's okay. But as long as it's pretty close and you, you understand a little bit of the process. Now that you told me I had to multiply... I understand it better. Perfect. Cool. And now I'm going to show you the shortcut. So the the reason that I started with showing you the math behind it is because this way means you can solve any percentage question out there. But the pro tip is what does percent mean? So per is going to be divided by and cent. What does cent mean? I do not know. Cool. It comes from Latin, and there are words that have cent in it, like centipede, century, centimeter, um, dollars and cents, centavos, I guess, would be like, I think it's Spanish. But they all mean one specific number. Do you know what that number is? No. How long is a century? Do you know? Or how many legs does a centipede have? I do not know. <laughs> cool. I don't know how many legs a centipede has either. But it, if you had to guess, which is probably what they did at the time when they saw this bug, they guessed it. And they guessed it would be 100. And a century is 100 years. So anytime you see and cents, how many cents makes a dollar? 100. Yeah, that's the easy one. So always think divided by 100, right? So... I want you to know like 15% of 100 is going to be 15. Therefore, 15% of 200 is going to be twice as big. And what's twice as big as 15? 30. 30. Cool, right? Yeah, now I understand it better. Okay. Awesome. So that is the trick. That's like the pro trick is just knowing percentages of numbers. If you know that like 80% of 200 is going to be 160. Because 80% of 100 is 80, 80% 80 of 200 has to be twice as big. And same with 300, 500, whatever. You just multiply by however many hundreds that is, and you're good. Okay. All right. But don't worry too much about the trick. Think more about the process, because the process is going to be what helps you the most on the test. Okay. All right. Next one. Go ahead. What did we be? I think B's right. Great job. Let's check. Three fourths of a job is completed in six hours. How long will it take to complete the entire job? How did you arrive at or B? You said nine. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. 
three fourths x equals six. So the way you would do that is kind of like that three fourths of x, just like when you did the percentage question. Anytime you see the of, in this case, is going to be a multiplication. So three fourths times x equals six. So then what would four fourths be is kind of like the question. How much is one x? Because three fourths is not 100% of x. It's just if I were to draw it like this, it's this much of it. Okay. So if we were to break that down and we only have three of these filled in, how long do you think each piece of this pie would be? How big would each of this pie be if three of them make six? I do not know. <laughs> not sure. No worries. I'll find another way to explain this one. So three fourths of X is six. How long will it take? So three fourths of a job is completed in six hours. How long will it take to complete the entire job? So what you do is you say three fourths X equals six. And so you can keep change flip. You can do that stuff. But honestly, if you know, if you think of a job that takes, <laughs> it's hard to explain this one. So the answer is eight. I'm just trying to figure out the fastest way to explain this one. And I don't think I can think of it on the spot, but let me show you why. Because three fourths of a job, you have any questions about what like three fourths of something is. So what I like to use is Kit Kats. Mm. All right. Because Kit Kats come in four pieces, right? Yeah. Okay. So now if we're thinking of this Kit Kat and I give you three of those Kit Kat, three pieces of it, and I keep one for myself, the question is, is how much was the whole Kit Kat? right now three of them that's that three fourths is equal to six and so what you can think of then is each of those each of the sticks of Kit Kat would be two 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 because two 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 makes what what's two plus two plus two six six right and so I need one more two and how much would that be eight Eight. Okay. There's other ways to do this one. If you see an algebra question like this and you see three fourths X equals six, the way you're technically classically supposed to do it is you're supposed to multiply by the inverse is what they say. And so I don't want to get you too confused off the jump, but you multiply across Anytime you're multiplying fractions, you don't need to do common denominators or any of that stuff. You just multiply straight across. So I'm going to ask you, and this is where your math facts are good enough that you're, you're, you know how to do this part. What is three times four? 12. 12. And what is four times three? We said four times three. Mm -hmm. 12. Perfect. And so that's one whole, right? 12 twelfths would be if we cut a pizza into 12 slices and all of them were there, then it's one whole, one pizza, right? And so that's why you get that one X on this side. And then on this side, now we have to do some crazy stuff. We turn the six into a fraction by dividing by one. And then what is, now we're gonna multiply straight across. Can you tell me the numerator and denominator of this fraction? 24 and 3. Perfect. Good job. And what is, because remember, this line actually means divided by. What is 24 divided by 3? 8. 8. Yep. And so the answer is 8. Now I understand it better. It's like when you explain it, I understand. Yeah. Well, these are fractions. They can be a little bit tough. You did you did really well. I feel like I could explain this one a little bit better if I had a little more time with it. But I think you you got the right answer. This is if you were to do the algebra side of it. Okay. All right. Let's do some process of elimination. Let's think about this one a little bit logically. Three-fourths of a job is how much, like, is that most of the, what do you think? Is that going to be most of the job, half of the job, none of the job, how much? Do you think it would be an ish? 
Wait, can you repeat that? What do you think three fourths is? Like, if you were three fourths of the way done with school, seventy. Think... Like, what almost. you said was right. What did you just say? Seventy five percent. Seventy five percent. That's great. The other way they say this is three quarters, right? And three quarters makes seventy five percent. So that's exactly right. You're seventy five percent of the way done, which is good. You want to be able to convert fractions to decimals to percentages and back just like that so the fact that you know that that's 75 percent is great now if this was one half of the job how much would the whole job be if half of it took six hours how long would it take to do the full job the hour mm -mm. if ha if you're halfway through your day it's six six hours in if it was half Mm -hmm. If not three fourths, it just says half. We'll say half of the job was six hours. How long would it take to be completely done with the job? Twelve hours. Exactly right. So you can actually eliminate some answers here. So we know we can get rid of twelve because it's not half of the job that's done in six hours. Otherwise, it would be twelve. Nine was a pretty was probably the best guess, other than the right answer. So I think you have like pretty good number sense you can kind of feel the numbers out so you should always kind of default on that kind of like when you were guessing with frugal you can go back and guess but try to feel it out to what makes the most sense to you okay but the fact that you knew that this was 75 percent, i'm going to bring it back to the other question earlier so 75 percent 0.75 of x equals six now what you would do is you can divide both sides by 0.75 and dividing by decimals gets a little gets a little frustrating gets a little confusing but it's not something you wouldn't be able to do all right so there's a few different ways to do this one but yeah the the easiest way to think of this is three pieces and there's one piece left to go makes six and so if it's three equal pieces, how big does each piece have to be? If we're talking Kit Kats again, each piece would have to be how many hours? Two. Yep. Two, two, two. And so how much would that leave for that last one would be another two, which gives you that eight hours. All right. But we can come back to this one. I think you did pretty well. And Nine, like I said, is a decent guess. It's just not quite correct. Eight hours is going to be the right answer. Okay. All right. All right. Go ahead and read this one out loud for me, please. The ratio of cats to dogs in a shelter is two to three. If there are 18 dogs, how many cats are there? All right. Ready, set, go. Maybe nine. So it might be, it might not. I'm not sure. But the timeline's pretty good, 20 seconds. Do you have a second guess? No. Okay, cool. So this one's really important. You got to read the question specifically. Cats to dogs, two to three, 18 dogs to how many cats? So what I would do is I would stack this up and say C, D, cats to dogs, which is two to three. And there are 18 dogs. So I do, do I put the 18 over here or do I put it over here on the left or right side? Dogs. Mm -hmm. This is the dog side. So which side, left or right? All right. That's right. This is the dog side. So we know there has to be more or less cats than dogs. Yes. It has to be less because it's two to three, two smaller than three. So whatever's here has to be smaller. Yes. Nine. This is that nine would be if it was one to two, right? Because what's half of 18? Nine. Nine. So we can now eliminate that nine. Do you want to have another guess? And again, this is where you want to think in pieces, right? Just like with the fraction question we did earlier. What if there were three sets of dogs that make that 18? How much would each set be? How many dogs would need to be in each set to make 18? Four. Oh, no. You said how many? 18 dogs, and they're in three pieces. So let's draw. I mean, I'll. They will have to be. Two, three. Yeah, that's right. Three, four, 
all right, let's, I'm just drawing some dogs here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And so the problem is, is the dogs are kind of scattered. And so math is all about just organizing the data. So you want it to be six equal pieces, right? So you would circle that six. And then one, two, let's do this. Two. This is six as well. And this is the last six. And so now you can see how, if it's two to three, how many sixes would it be? If it's two to three, how many? How many? So if it's two pieces, right? Now we're converting these dogs into cats. Remember, there's three sets of six for the dogs. How many sets of six would there be for cats? Two. Mm -hmm. So how many dots are in two of those circles? Twelve. Perfect. All right, so that is the right answer. Now, this one, the, the mistake people make with ratios is they try to divide by too many things. And so we didn't actually do any physical division here, but if you were to just divide it, it might get pretty simple. Basically, what I would ask you is, how do I turn this three? What do I have to multiply by to get to 18? You have to multiply to get to 18. Mm -hmm. How many threes do I need to get to 18? six very good and whatever you do to that side you would then do to this side and so what is two times six twelve perfect and so ratio questions shouldn't be that spooky for you you kind of want to go in pretty confident with those ones you just want to make sure your data is organized make sure the dogs stay on the dog side and the cats stay on the cat side okay now i understand better perfect cool good job and I might I might do a quick Google search of another ratio question just to get one more practice in. All right, go ahead. This is an Eiffel Tower question that uh, was put, brought up. So go ahead. Can you tell me how you approach paragraph comprehension questions? Do you remember the trick from last time? Read the question first. Perfect. Good. Go ahead. Read the question first. According to the passage, what event was the Eiffel Tower built for? Perfect. And then skim the answers. It's even good if you have like a guess of which one you think might be right before you start reading, because then you can prove or disprove that you were right. So what do you think would be your, like, you don't know, but because we haven't read, but what would you guess would be the answer? Unless you do know from, from history where I, why it was built. I don't know, but what would you guess for? I don't know. Okay. Well, you just pick A, B, C, or D. No worries. D. D. All right. And so we don't know that that's right, but we think maybe it was the 1889 World's Fair. Now, ready, set, go. Remember, you're looking for what event it was built for. Can you go back to the question? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's D. Yep, you're right. Good job. But what's cool is it only took you 30 seconds. And that's really cool because you're looking there trying to see if you are right or wrong. Not only are you remembering just the question, but you're actually looking through and trying to find that specific data right away. And so it makes it a little bit faster. Yes. Any I, when I read the question first, so I know what I'm looking for. Perfect. Yep, that's right. Good job. Then that will do it for Mini Quiz Monday. Thanks, everybody. I might drop another video on this one sometime in the future because I feel like I can explain this one a little bit better. But you did great. I think you understand the concept of the twos. So I think that's great. Hope you enjoyed that video of how to answer those five ASVAB questions. If you do need more ASVAB help, check me out at gammonaltutors.com or ASVAB Domination. You can find me on YouTube. You can find my podcast, ASVAB Domination, YouTube, Gammonal Tutors. Um, and then if you do want some more help, I do have online courses and I'm happy to help you guys as much as I can. All right. Happy studying, guys. Thanks for joining us for Mini Quiz Monday by Gammonal Tutors. If you found this helpful, please like, subscribe, and share this video with anyone preparing for the ASVAB or any recruiters who can pass it along to future soldiers.
For more resources, visit GamunalTutors.com and don't miss our podcast, Asvab Domination. For deeper insights and success stories, let's help as many students as possible succeed.